Hello and welcome to another episode of Wellness. Today we focus on obstetric fistula, a condition characterized with shame, pain, depression and isolation. There are medical conditions that are very hard to discuss. Obstetric fistula is one of them and perhaps tops the list. It is a painful and embarrassing disorder that primarily affects women. Each year, at least 50 to 100,000 women suffer from this illness across the world. We highlight issues surrounding this unfortunate childbirth injury and the stigma around it. How can it be prevented? How is it treated? And why do we need to include men in this conversation? Let's find out. We were looking at a silent epidemic, which was the obstetric fistula, yeah. which comes as a result of prolonged obstructed labor. Mm -hmm. And the prolonged obstructed labor will lead to a injury to the tissues mm -hmm. of the bladder, tissues of the urethra, mm -hmm. tissues of the rectum, uh, that then once those tissues have been injured mm -hmm. and they break down, mm -hmm. it, it, they create an abnormal communication between, uh, of course, the, the bladder yes. and the birth canal. And once that is created, the woman starts leaking urine directly from the bladder into the birth canal and outside. Because after that, there's no, nothing to control. <coughs> yeah. Naturally, a woman has control, and she's able to hold urine only when she reaches the toilet, until when that is disrupted. So once that gatekeeper is disrupted, then the woman starts leaking urine, uh, and leaks urine continuously for 24 hours. No, she cannot stop, stop it. Okay. Yeah, she can't stop it because the kidneys continue to excrete because this is waste mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. must come out of the body. If you keep waste in the body, you are going to be toxic. So urine is toxic. Mm -hmm. If it's kept within the body, it mm -hmm. must come out. And somehow, therefore, continuously, because its body is working, so continuously the urine is formed and it must come out. It must come out. Uh, if the damage happens, for example, to the rectum, then you find that stool will come through the back canal and out again. Mm -hmm. Because uh, ideally, it's mm -hmm. supposed to go through the normal route, which should be through the anal opening. Mm -hmm. And the anal opening has sphincteric or has a sphincter that can control or stop you from losing, let's say, flatters, mm -hmm. air, uh, or gas for that matter, mm -hmm. or, or even stool, until you reach the toilet. Yes. So if there is an abnormal communication uh, which does not have that the, the, the control, then the woman is leaking fecal matter through the birth canal mm -hmm. and outside. Mm -hmm. And that again uh, makes the woman therefore completely uh, uncomfortable, mm -hmm. completely ashamed, completely uh, infected, because yeah. uh, this is waste, mm -hmm. which must come out in this right way and go to where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, in essence, this is the fistula that we started off uh, trying to help create awareness and bring control mm -hmm. and hopefully uh, eliminate it. Um, I had fistula in 2017 uh, after the delivery of my baby. And um, at the time, of course, I was in hospital for about 21 days, birth complications. I didn't even know I had fistula. So I'm there nursing my baby in the nursery, up and about the stairs. But I noticed that I had like, you know, like the way you have noise, like you're farting from the vagina. And um, I remember sharing with a nurse who told me probably it's just kegels. I need to do kegels, hold my muscles as I relate, hold my muscles as I, you know, as I relax, so that uh, we see that it's the, the area, the vagina, is firm, firm up enough to stop the farting. So I, I did that for a couple of weeks but still the same noises were there when I was in the hospital. Um, my baby went through blood exchange story for another day and eventually were released after six weeks. So going home <coughs> I, I started eating more to get more breast milk 
to feed, breastfeed my baby. And in that long run, as I noticed, things are not fine. You know, baby's discharging stool. I'm actually discharging stool. Hey, from my vagina. Mm -hmm. An uncontrollable leakage of urine and feces. So at the time, I thought I had gone crazy, like psycho. How? When? Where? Have you ever, it's unheard of to have stool coming out from your vagina. So it was a moment of uh, shock, disbelief, pain, stress, and I didn't even know who to tell. How can you call someone, come, do you know how many listens to, how, how do you start? I didn't share with my family, my sisters, I didn't, my, my dad, I did not. And um, to be honest, I was quiet for a couple of weeks. Uh, to a point now it was too much because of the infections that you get. Our vaginas are, are, are designed to be dry, isn't it? So I realized that with that leakage of urine and feces, I was getting wet and um, itchiness, the vaginal infections, discharges. Um, it got me, you know, it pushed me to call my sister-in-law who is a nurse in Kenyatta. So I shared with her and I told her, when I look at my sanitary towel, stool comes out from the vagina as opposed to be this at the end. And the, you know, you can, the smell of the discharge that is there is not the normal after bath discharge. So she told me, you know what, we could be having fistula. What I need to do is um, go to Kenyatta for screening. And in that season, there was advertisements in the media, on TV, on the days that you can go for screening, and then of course surgery. So I went there, I, I looked at the media, and I, I realized, you know, the dates I went to hospital. Shock on me. The many women who have fistula, it's, 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 oh, it's disheartening, it's, uh, it's overwhelming. Because there were many women who were queuing, many women who had urine on their skirts, 70 years, 60 years old, middle age, you know, and we had to queue for, for hours. And eventually when I was diagnosed, I queued the rest and when I was screened, I was told I have rectal vaginal fistula, fourth degree tear. As long as the women continue to get pregnant, yeah. they are likely, or they have chances, or a risk of developing uh, fistula. fistula. So mainly it's about obstruction, right? Yes. Are there other causes of obstetric fistula? We can have a fistula coming as a result of uh, cancer, rape, uh -huh. trauma, yes. or bone witch uh -huh. as a part of uh, uh, causes or the types of fistula that can come yeah. about. Uh -huh. So, radiation as a treatment of uh, cancer mm -hmm. would then lead to fistula formation several years after it has happened. Yeah. So that um, we have different types. Yes. However, uh -huh. of all this, when you look at it, the most dehumanizing was the obstetric, obstetric fistula. fistula. And that's why we set out to fight obstetric fistula. Yes. So what are some of the faces? of obstetric fistula? Uh, the question has always been yes. that if we didn't do anything uh -huh. to this woman, what would happen what to her? Happen? Okay. Yeah, what would happen to this woman yeah. if, for example, the world was so silent about it? Yeah? Mm. Some, of, some of the questions that we never ask ourselves, because mm. when I look at it, mm -hmm. I don't ask that question, what would happen to her? She's leaking urine mm -hmm. after childbirth. She has mm -hmm. lost her baby. But she had a stillbirth. Uh, so what, what would happen to her if I don't do anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Many people will say, what will happen to me if I associated myself with her? Because it means I'm also considered dirty. Yeah. And everybody runs away from me because I'm associated with this mm -hmm. woman. Yeah, what happens to have her fisted and leaking urine and stool? and smelling everywhere, he's been called very many names. Uh, uh, during my, uh, our research in fistula of women, or women living with fistula, we found so many names used to describe women leaking urine or living with fistula. And some of the names were very derogatory. Mm -hmm you can say, and very dehumanizing. Because a, a woman who starts leaking urine after childbirth and even has lost her baby during yeah. the delivery uh -huh. is a, a very stigmatized woman. True. 
is a woman who has no confidence with herself. Mm -hmm. She is a poor, not self-worth, and uh, she has no self-esteem at all. Mm -hmm. I labored for too long. Baby got tired. I got tired. I pushed the baby forcefully. Baby tore the vagina all the way to the rectum. So instead of having the normal two organs we have, I had one organ. Hence now there's two coming out from the vagina and the, and the and uncontrollable leakage of urine and feces. Apart from the urine and feces, the fatting. Okay. Yeah, the uncontrollable fatting because you have no bricks. Okay. Yeah, there are yeah. no bricks. And at that season, of course, I was at home breastfeeding the baby. I was a bit aloof. I was actually a lot. I was a bit drawn, isolated completely. I didn't want people around my space. I didn't want anybody to come and see my baby. Visit what for? To come and sense the smell. The smell, the false smell of poop. Because you, they are dis you can imagine when a child has poop in the house. Yes who's not being cleaned well on pampas, the smell. Yeah, so yes. definitely, you can imagine, the smell, the smell was there, it was bad. And um, it was terrible. It was so, so bad that I, I, I was, you know, I had moments of spikes, like I don't want people, I have angry moments, I have temperamental issues. And eventually, you know, guys are wondering what happened. Sharon is bubbly, she loves people, she's all over, and all of a sudden she's shutting people down. What's the problem? I didn't want my in-laws to come and see my baby. So, you know, then after that now, after getting to know a Victor Bajano Fistila, I proceeded to, to, to seek for help from Dr. Hisa because I couldn't go to the camp with other women. I had a small baby whose immunity was so low. So I spoke to Dr. Hisa, which he screened me again in Haligam uh, Healthcare, a facility in Haligam, his clinic, and he screened me again for a vaginal fistula, fourth degree tear. That's the worst form of fistula. And from then on now, um, I had to wait for him to finish his, the season in Kenyatta, the camp going on, the surgeries. Then I, would, I did a private private surgery on my own, yeah, with, with, the, with the surgeon, yeah. So at that time, of course, um, mixed feelings, anxiety for the baby, anxiety for yourself as a, as, as a person who has fistula, you know, you, you worry, will I ever be fine again? Will I be, go back to shape? Will, will I stop leaking stool from my vagina? Will I stop leaking the urine? Will I ever sexually satisfy my husband? You know, will I be in a space where I am not so keen, to, because don't come too close, or, don't, or in my room where I'm smelling because of the stool? So it was a very difficult time, as I said. The, this woman has to hide, really, or she's withdrawn. So you see the mongoose runs away from people uh -huh. and they, they secluded from the society and in general then the women degrade mentally, physically, mentally, physically. and socially yeah. they degrade yeah. and um, uh, then they go into a depression mm -hmm. and uh, they realize they are not worth mm -hmm. as human beings. Mm -hmm. So every time you see her she's unkempt. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't care anyway because people don't love her. She feels she's not loved. She, she's not loved mm -hmm. and she's neglected mm -hmm. and that's how the story began mm -hmm. or begins. Yeah. And um, she loses uh, connectivity with the society. Mm -hmm. Because she doesn't want to go out to people. Yeah, and whatever is happening elsewhere, she wouldn't even know. Mm -hmm. So you come to visit a family, they come to your house, for example, and you have maybe a daughter who has a fistula. She's kept so far away. I wouldn't even know. She's not even introduced. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave, come my visit and leave yeah. when she's seated or maybe somewhere in the background or maybe if there's a special house, she's mm -hmm. kept in a house mm -hmm. whereby um, as she stays or if they you feel it you give them something mm -hmm. but she kind of has embarrassed the family yeah. uh, and yeah. the embarrassment spreads not only to the family but even to the children mm -hmm. in, school, yeah, in school the children are uh, uh, the the fellow pupils who run away from children whose mothers have um uh, yeah uh, wow. and uh, they they actually also uh, uh, treat them uh, negatively mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and they even avoid them also mm -hmm. and they cannot even offer anything even a sweet to the fellow peoples 
So, <coughs> so the story goes very far. Mm-hmm. Uh, the husbands are also already killed. Whenever they are with their people, I mean, uh, fellow the friends, men. Yes. The first time my sisters heard about what I do is when I was doing a channel Minji Minji. Oh yes, uh, with, with the uh, size 8 reborn. And they were like, what? Yeah, we are hearing this story on TV, like everyone, what? On t- oh yeah, that's how secretive I can be. Despite the fact that I'm bubbly and all over, having so many friends, I, I really didn't feel like it. How, I don't know, how will I start? Exactly. Then at the time, even the thought of fistula was so in my heart. The thought of fistula, you know, you, how do you start telling someone? And then explaining to them what it is. And then people will overthink it, you know? And to be honest, even at some point, I thought I had literally been bewitched. Okay, so that was part of your fears. Part of my fears. Yes. I cannot have sciatica when I'm pregnant. I cannot have issues with blood exchange with my son, you know, Billy Rubens, when he was born. Then again, fistula, you know, and those are the misconceptions that come in now. You overthink what could not be. Yeah. You overthink what is it that I, you know, where did I, where did I go wrong? You know, why is it that I'm being, you know, things are happening subsequently that are not good. But over time, I've come to realize, you know, everything happens for the good of those who love Jesus. Because God had to allow it so that I would be a beacon of hope for yes. women and girls, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. When you speak about, um, you know, even uh, hospitals and doctors uh, being unable to, you know, identify fistula and even treat it, how is it treated? Do you know fistula is a highly specialized uh, surgery? Okay. You need training. Yes. And specialized training for that matter. Yes. Uh, it is a public health issue. It is. Full solution is only to do surgery. Yes, surgery. Surgery. It's the absolute means of tra- treatment. Without surgery, a woman with history will continue to suffer. There are no medications. There are no medications that are going to help you. Okay. Or so, uh, I wish you had um, glue. Yes. Where you can glue it, and then it stops leaking. Yes. But that has been tried in those days. It never worked. It never worked. Until surgery, and yes. the specialized surgery is done uh-huh. yes. to close that hole. Mm-hmm. Then we restore uh, the normal functions mm-hmm. of the urinary system mm-hmm. or the, the fecal system. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. And if surgery is terrible, mm-hmm. not uh, achievable, mm-hmm. the woman continues to leak urine or yes. stool forever. Uh-huh. Now you said it's, it's surgery is the absolute means of treatment. So how successful are these uh, operations, and are there possible complications, and are there chances of this uh, surgery to fail? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you talk of success, you mm-hmm. must talk of failure. True. Isn't it? Yeah. For any surgery, we have successes. Yeah. And for any surgery, we have failures. Yes. Yeah. And so the. In the specialized hands, fistula is successful. It can be successfully closed. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the once it's closed, uh, the, the, the leakage of urine stops. At that it point. stops. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so, in uh, many chances mm-hmm. and centers, we can achieve up to about 90%. Success. Okay. These are the people who are trained in fistula repair, uh, and so uh, we still have a 10% chance of failure, okay. uh-huh. or even sometimes still leakage of urine or continuous of urine uh-huh. after the fistula has been closed. Uh-huh. So this, these things are still there. This 10% uh-huh. will either be a failed. Better fail one because you can start, uh, try again to help At, and repair it to once repair again okay. two or three months later. Okay. Then uh, one that follows the closure mm-hmm. and is still incontinent, mm-hmm. and the reason could be because maybe the damage yes. of the bladder was extensive, uh-huh. that it involves uh, continuous mechanisms in the body. Sadly in this country, in our country, um, insurance doesn't cover for child-related injuries. So you can imagine if you're doing it privately, it's very expensive because it's a procedure. However, treatment now is done for free, courtesy of Kenyatta Hospital, uh, with fistula camps that are ongoing. Uh, Jamal Hospital in Buruburu, um, 
Kisi Referral Hospital, Machakos Level 5 Hospital, Ndo Coast, Mombasa County Hospital, so that there you can be able to access treatment um, from time to time, especially during the camp season. But the hospitals that do surgeries 24-7 is um, Jamaa Hospital in Buru, uh, um, Ghana Care Hospital in Eldoret, and yeah, yeah, that's how you can be able to get the surgeries for free. Yeah, with, with no costs, with zero costs at all. Safe Women Peace and Love Foundation is a beacon of hope for women and girls. It's, yeah, it's a safe space where women come together who have had peace love, share their experiences, purposes of mental healing. Yeah, because it's a very devastating, very demonizing condition. It's, a, it's one of those conditions that you don't even know who to tell, as I said. So when we come together and do retreats for women, do peace and awareness campaigns, you're able to see that women also get to share the husband's living, you know, get to share about how they lost their jobs. Like one of our beneficiaries who was sacked as a receptionist in Mombasa. You get to say how, yeah, because of fistula. Yeah, you're able to share, you know, all the integrities, how you, how you, you know, all the, it's a way of healing, isn't it? Then at the same time, you now we, we, we see the way forward. We, we, you know, we uplift each other, you know, in terms of um, how to donate in your marriages, how to, how to be able to, you know, to work out the sexuality aspect of it, intimacy in marriage. Yes. Yeah, so those are the details that we discuss on a very personal level. Mm -hmm. and until, you know, you find that you're not alone. Others are even saying, you know, even after surgery, I still urinate. Mm -hmm. I still discharge too. It still comes. It still comes, but very lightly in continents where you have to wear panty liner or pads. Oh, it still, it still comes. Time. It doesn't clear with time. So, yeah, so there's another one. There's a, one of our beneficiaries did surgery. It's still leaked and, uh, you, you know, still leakage of urine and feces. Yes. Then the second surgery again, there's no vagina. The stitches were overstitched. The, there is no place for penetration with you know with, with your husband you know your spouse, yes. so those are the so things. Have to do it again. Then now she, we are we are looking after now doing it again. Many women today suffer from obstetric fistulas silently. Still, others may not know what ails them. With this discovery today, it is safe to highlight that fistula is highly preventable and treatable. If you are suffering from this illness, you are one among hundreds of women who are going through the same. Feel better soon. Thank you for watching Wellness with Wanjiro. I am your host, Wanjiro Duku. Until next time, goodbye.